Welcome to one of the National Football League's magnificent new stadiums. Today, a rainy, gusty afternoon in Cincinnati, Riverfront Stadium is the scene of an important battle in the American Conference's Central Division. This is football's tightest race. All four teams are within one and a half games of each other. The Steelers are tied with the Browns for first place, while their opponents, the Bengals, are just a game behind. So this game is a key one in the AFC. The first time the two teams met, Pittsburgh won, but the Bengals are coming off a big win over the Browns. Both coaches have similar problems, youth. These are two of the youngest and least experienced teams in the league. Last year's rookie quarterback sensation, Greg Cook, has been sidelined all year with an arm injury. But Paul Brown was fortunate in getting Virgil Carter. Last week against Cleveland, Carter became the first quarterback in four years to run for over 100 yards. Pittsburgh is led by their Terry twins, Han Ratty and Bradshaw, and their traditionally rugged defense. They've never won a title, but they feel this is the year. I'm Jack Whitaker, and this is the NFL Game of the Week, Pittsburgh versus Cincinnati. Cincinnati is called the Queen City, but their weather today was anything but royal as rain drenched the field. It didn't seem to bother the Steelers at the beginning of the game as Bradshaw, starting today, teamed with number 33, John Fuqua, a second-year setback from Morgan State. Fuqua took a swing pass and shook off two tackles for a 15-yard gain. Bradshaw came right back and attacked the same side of the Bengal defense, and he used the same man to do it. Fuqua, whose nickname is Frenchie, turned the corner, passed number 51, linebacker Ken Avery, and swept 29 yards down the left sideline. There was no one in his path, and he might have gone the distance if he hadn't slipped on the wet astroturf. Chalk up another tackle for the mod sod. On the next play, Bradshaw went for Ron Shanklin, and his bullet pass hit number 25 right on the numbers. The result was a freak interception for Cincinnati. Pittsburgh had been moving at will, but the error ended their first series. The play was a portentous one for Pittsburgh. The Bengals had the ball at their own 40, and their first play, a quick trap up the middle, sprung Paul Robinson for 20 yards. Pittsburgh was keying on Jess Phillips, who was having a fine season, but the Bengals crossed them up by continually going to Robinson with great success. Part of the reason was the play of the Bengal offensive line. Watch number 73, guard Pat Matson take out the cornerback, number 44, Lee Callen. Chuck Allen, number 58, came across to make the tackle, but Cincinnati was moving the ball, and they were doing it on the ground. Robinson took a pitch out and swept right again. And once more, it was a key block by Matson that sprung him. When he was finally brought down, Cincinnati was on the Pittsburgh 13 yard line. But here the Steelers stiffen. And on third down, Carter tried his first pass of the game. It was intended for ace receiver Bob Trumpy in the end zone, but Lee Callen made the save for Pittsburgh. With fourth and five on the nine yard line, Horse Mullman's field goal split the uprights and Cincinnati was out in front, three to nothing.
Pittsburgh now had the ball, and Terry Bradshaw passed to Ron Shanklin over the middle. This time, the receiver held on. A repeat of this play in slow motion shows the Bradshaw passing style that is so coveted around the league. Bradshaw has one of the strongest arms ever seen in the NFL, but has had to work hard to quicken his release. In the Steelers' first few games, he was trapped three times for safeties because he held on to the ball too long. On the next play, Bradshaw was too eager to take the snap. The result was another Pittsburgh turnover as number 66, middle linebacker Bill Berge, picked up the fumble and took it to the Pittsburgh 20. The Bengals had another big break. Four plays later, Horst Bullman kicked his second field goal to increase the Cincinnati lead to 6-0. To Bradshaw came out throwing again, this time to Bob Adams. To give you some idea of Pittsburgh's youth, Adams is the only Steeler receiver that is a veteran, and he is in his second year. The other five receivers, Dennis Hughes, John Staggers, Dave Smith, Yubi Bryant and Ron Shanklin are all rookies. John Fuqua successfully swept the right side of Bengal defense again. Both Fuqua and his running mate Preston Pearson are new to the Steelers this year. Once again, just when they were moving, mistakes were costly to Pittsburgh. Bradshaw's pass for Staggers was intercepted by Fletcher Smith as the first quarter ended. We'll return with more of the exciting action from the NFL Game of the Week. The second quarter opened with Cincinnati with the ball and leading by six points in a very even game. Steeler mistakes had met the difference so far. Pittsburgh was defensing the Bengals well as this reverse play, which lost six yards, testifies. Then, for the first time in the game, the Bengals made an error. Jess Phillips fumbled the handoff and Steeler tackle Chuck Hinton recovered. Now it was Pittsburgh's chance to capitalize on a mistake, and it looked like they might do it, as Bradshaw threw a strike to Dave Smith at their opponent's 23-yard line. But then the Bengal defense played tough. Bradshaw passed to John Fuqua in an effort to spring him, but he was met quickly by Fletcher Smith and Al Beauchamp for no gain. Then Bradshaw went for the score, but his pass was tipped and fell incomplete in the end zone. A field goal attempt by Gene Mingo was wide. Pittsburgh had again come up empty. A few plays later, they had another chance, and for the first time today, Bradshaw got lucky. His pass was tipped by Bill Berge, yet still caught by Preston Pearson for an 18-yard gain. But the albatross of error continued to hang with Pittsburgh. Bradshaw fumbled the snap for the second time today. Cincinnati recovered, but had been offside, so the Steelers had yet another chance. Once again, they blew it. Bradshaw's beautiful spiral speared John Staggers right in the chest, but he let it get away. Bradshaw came right back with the same play, but this time the pass was off target, and number 20, Lamar Parrish, one of the finest rookie cornerbacks to enter the league, had his second interception of the day. Cincinnati's opportunistic defense had again come up with the big play. This time, the Bengal offense caught fire. Carter, who up to this point had completed only one pass, began to hit his receivers. Chip Myers, number 25, was the main target. The six foot five inch Myers has been averaging over 15 yards of reception and has constantly come up with a big catch when it's needed most. He was instrumental in the Bengals' big win over the Browns the week before. Myers' second catch of the series had brought the Bengals to midfield and Carter's pass to Trumpy near the sideline put them in Steeler territory. 
The next play on the trap, Robinson shot through the middle of the Pittsburgh 14 yard line. With 39 seconds left in the half, Carter passed to Myers, who just managed to drag his feet inbounds. Cincinnati was now at the Steeler five. 34 seconds remaining, and Carter, football's running as quarterback, rolled right and into the end zone for the touchdown. Cincinnati had finally opened some daylight in what had been an even game. As the half came to an end, the Bengals 13, the mistake-ridden Steelers nothing. Though Pittsburgh trailed by 13 going into the second half, they were certainly still very much in this game. But Horst Mullman's towering kickoffs into the gray Ohio skies continually kept Pittsburgh deep in its own territory with poor field position. Terry Bradshaw had been injured on the final play of the half, and Terry Hanratty would open the second half at quarterback. Hanratty was ordered to keep the ball on the ground rather than risk interceptions, and setback John Fuqua became a one-man team on the drive. Going with quick traps up the middle, Fuqua and the Steelers rolled down the field and looked unstoppable. The strategy was working like a proverbial charm. Fuqua carried eight times on the drive and gained 51 yards. Not once did Hanratty put the ball in the air. When it was third and one on the two, Fuqua again delivered and got the first down. Fuqua wrapped up his neat little package by going over the middle once more. And the Steelers were back in the game, trailing now 13 to seven. Having used up almost one half the third quarter on the previous drive, Pittsburgh now had momentum but failed to contain rookie Lamar Parrish on the kickoff, and the Bengals began from their own 43. The great plays were not reserved solely for Cincinnati. Pittsburgh's defense, inspired by their offenses showing, began the second half with an inspired exhibition that for a while sustained their momentum. However, Paul Robinson was set loose, and as he had done in the first half, Robinson began to lead the Bengals downfield. Paul Brown sent in his patented power sweep, and Robinson swept either end of the Steelers' defense for good yardage. Then Virgil Carter went to the air, and on two consecutive plays, he used receiver Chip Myers, number 25, to good advantage on medium-range patterns. On the second, Myers broke a tackle on a quick out and went to the Steeler 15. Defender Lee Callen was the man Myers beat on the play. From here, it was again Paul Robinson. Behind the block of number 71, guard Rufus Mays, Robinson swept left 15 yards to a touchdown. Robinson and Carter had regained momentum for Cincinnati when it was needed most. On a well-executed drive, utilizing both his air and ground games with equal efficiency, Paul Brown had his Bengals back in a 13-point lead, 20 to seven. The rest of the quarter was dominated by the Bengal defense. Pittsburgh earlier had had great success on the ground, but now, led by number 66 linebacker Bill Berge, the Bengal defense was on the prowl.
so Hanratty went to the air for the first time in the half. But instead of going with the short or medium range passes, he chose to try and bomb the Bengal secondary into submission. This strategy failed miserably, as time and again, Parrish, Riley, and number 31, Fletcher Smith, stayed right with their men and prevented the completion. So the third quarter would close with the Steelers unable to penetrate either by air or land, and they would be forced to give up the ball on downs without reaching midfield. Pittsburgh was not out of it yet, although they trailed by 13, 20 to 7. We'll be right back with more exciting action on the NFL Game of the Week. The fourth quarter saw more of the same Bengal defense that had ended the third quarter. Ken Riley, number 13, one of the league's toughest man-to-man -to -man cornermen, knocked down one Hanratty pass, while Hanratty himself failed to connect on another. This one, a short flip for Pearson. Pittsburgh had to give it up once again. It took Virgil Carter just one play to increase the Bengals' lead. Carter faded back, pumped fake short, and tossed a perfect strike to tight end Bob Trumpy, who went in untouched, except for a futile backslap by Lee Callan, number 44. Whereas in the first half, the Bengal scores have been set up primarily through Steeler mistakes, their offense was now rolling, and Cincinnati had just about iced the game with 13 minutes to play. The Bengals 27, Steelers 7. If Hanratty could move the Steelers to a quick score, this game was not yet over. And Terry began by hitting a pass to John Staggers, number two, for a first down. Repeating the play on our isolated camera, we can see that even when they have success, quarterbacks usually are made to suffer one way or another. Even the luck of the Irish can't prevent that. The drive kept moving by picking up a key third and one on a Pearson dive over the top and on a pass to Dave Smith, number 88. The Steelers also got a break when on a fourth and one they went for it. Fuqua fumbled after making the first down, but the Steelers recovered and the drive kept moving. Number 42, Dick Hoke, was good for an option pass as they moved to the Bengals' 26. But here, the Bengals' secondary again made the plays that had stopped Pittsburgh's air game all day. Though they ranked 11th in pass defense, the Bengal linebackers and secondary were today all over Steeler receivers, like Saran Wrap on a meatloaf. Even Hanratty scrambling couldn't change the result. The Bengals' pass coverage finally paid off when Bill Berge intercepted a Hanratty pass and rumbled near midfield. With seven minutes to play, the Bengals were sitting pretty. Paul Brown decided to run out the clock, and his backs took turns doing so. Number 30, Jess Phillips, gained 30 yards on the day while Paul Robinson went over the 100-yard mark rushing for the first time in two years with 119 on the day. Aided by a major penalty, the Bengals suddenly found that while running out the clock, they were on their way to another score. So Carter went to Robinson to pick up a first down and got it. The Steelers finally began to stack up the Bengal runners, but even when they did, a face mask penalty moved the ball to the 10. So Carter went for the score. Behind perfect protection, he spotted Eric Crabtree and hit him for the Bengals' fourth touchdown of the game. 
On a repeat in super slow motion, our end zone camera shows the protection Carter received from his offensive line. Carter's pass just did clear the outstretched arms of a Steeler lineman and found Crabtree, who had beaten defender Clarence Oliver by a step. This final blow closed the door and shut the lights on Pittsburgh once and for all, as the game ended with Cincinnati handing the Steelers a convincing 34-7 defeat. As the final seconds ticked off, Coach Paul Brown had notched another satisfying victory on his belt. A week before, he had beaten his former team, the Cleveland Browns. And with today's revenge victory over the Steelers, Brown and his Bengals are now in a second place tie with Pittsburgh, one game behind Cleveland. With the Saints, Oilers, Chargers, and Patriots left to play, the Bengals schedule gives them more than just a chance at the AFC Central Division title. At least they will have a happy Thanksgiving. The Steelers had their turkey four days too soon.